Hi, I'm Nadine Thornhill, sexuality educator, and welcome to my very first Q&A where I answer your questions about sex and sexuality. So our first question this week comes from a reader on Facebook, and they write, I have never had anal sex, but my partner has wanted us to try it for quite a while. I once had a boyfriend that just stuck his penis in my ass without permission and without lube, and it hurt so badly and really upset me. Ever since that terrible experience, I've had no desire to try anal. I'm scared it will hurt and not feel good for me, and I'm afraid it might make me poop myself either during, right after, or all the time. I guess I'm open to exploring this a little, but need some advice. Thank you so much, first of all, for sending your question. I'm sorry that you had such a terrible experience with anal sex. Um, I'm also really grateful that you shared a bit about, a bit about it with us because it's a really important lesson as to why consent needs to happen when you're having sex with other people. It's not okay to ever put, you know, part of your body or toy or anything in or on another person if they're not ready for it and if they haven't given you their consent and their permission because you can really hurt them, you can scare them, it can be really upsetting and that can stay with people for a long time. So it's essential that you have consent. So let's talk about, you know, things to keep in mind if you're exploring anal sex. I think this is a really important topic for people who have teenagers as well. If we look at research, there's been a little bit of an uptick in rates of teens having anal sex in recent years. So if you look at research, I think, it, it, you know, it depends on what research you're looking at, but it's usually somewhere between like 3% and 10% of teens between I think like 15 and 19 years old have reported having had anal sex at some point. Because porn is so readily available, a lot of people get their sort of information about anal sex from porn. And the thing is, while porn can be fun to look at and it can be really arousing, it's not always the best tool when you're sort of trying to learn a sexual technique. I was listening to an interview with a really well-known um, adult film star recently, and they were just basically describing porn as being like a cartoon, where everything is exaggerated, and it's a fantasy, and it's really for fun and for entertainment. So when you watch anal sex in porn, oftentimes what you see is one person, you know, taking their relatively large penis or a big toy or their hand or something and just kind of sliding on into somebody else's butt. And while that can be fun to watch and it may, you know, turn you on, that isn't necessarily the way that anal sex is going to work for someone who isn't a professional film star and doesn't have the benefit of, you know, editing and, you know, all the production around it to make it look like that can just, you know, just happen right away. I want to talk a little bit about things you can do to help make anal sex more pleasurable and more fun if that's something you want to explore. If it's something you explore and you just find it's not your thing, then it's not your thing and that's totally fine. There are a lot of people who like anal sex, there are a lot of people who don't like anal sex. It's whatever feels good and whatever is working for you. Um, the first thing is that you want to go slowly when you're exploring anal sex. And remember that it, anal sex doesn't have to mean anal penetration. Anal sex can mean, you know, stimulating the outside of the anus with fingers or a toy or tongue. Um, if you are doing penetration, it doesn't have to be, you know, full deep penetration and thrusting with penis or with a toy, you know, you can start off with, you know, just one finger and work your way up to two fingers. You can use something like anal beads, which is sort of a series of little spheres on a, on a string or maybe on a tube. And, you know, the, the first ones are small and they get bigger and bigger, but you might, you know, just want to use one or two. You can use a really, really slender dildo. And you don't have to go in all the way, you know, you can just go in as far as you feel comfortable. If you are having anal penetration, you have two anal sphincters. There's one on the outside of your body, that's the one you can see. You can control it by sort of tensing and relaxing your, your muscles. And generally, it's easier for people to relax that outside sphincter 
for anal penetration when they've had lots of sexual stimulation, they're really, really aroused, they're feeling really good during the moment. So, you know, lots of fooling around, lots of touching, lots of playing, whatever kind of stimulation feels good for you to build up to that. And then if you want to try anal penetration, you know, breathing and taking your time and really trying to relax that external sphincter as much as possible. And then if you insert something through that first sphincter on the inside of your body, and it's usually, you know, a couple of centimeters, it's different in each person, but it's just a little bit inside your body. Um, there's a second sphincter and it's called an involuntary sphincter. That one you can't open or close at will. It does open and close, but it does that on its own. That sphincter often responds to um, pressure, not a lot of pressure, but if you're inserting a finger or a penis or a toy, um, oftentimes what will happen is you'll sort of meet this resistance and if you're the person being penetrated you might feel it like, oh it's not going to go any farther. Don't push past that sphincter, don't try to force it open, but if you kind of maintain sort of light pressure against it, eventually what's going to happen is it's going to relax and then it's easier to penetrate deeper inside the rectum if that's something that you want to do. If that isn't something that you want to do, then you don't have to do that. Again, you want to do whatever feels good and pleasurable and comfortable. The other thing to remember with anal sex is that if you are using something to penetrate your anus, putting something in your rectum, you want to make sure that thing um, has either a, a wider base on it or that it's attached to a human being. Just because the anus is connected to your intestines, it's sort of an open system, you don't want something to sort of go up in there and then you can't get it out. So if you have a base or a person that kind of stops the object from going all the way inside your rectum, it's not gonna get lost. Of course, you want to use lots and lots of lube. I say of course, but that isn't obvious to everyone, again, because we don't always see depictions of anal sex where people are using lube. You actually have to use a lot of lube because your anus doesn't lubricate itself. And to keep things comfortable and sort of sliding in and out without, you know, damaging or rubbing up against the very delicate skin that's inside the rectum, lube. Lots and lots and lots and lots. If you're feeling sort of any friction, any pressure, if it feels at all uncomfortable, Add more lube, always lube, lots of lube. If you're using barriers, which you know will help reduce your risk of contracting sexually transmitted infections, if that's a concern for you, um, you can use a water-based lubricant so that it doesn't degrade um, your condoms or your gloves or your finger pots. Again, if you are having penetrative anal sex, just be aware that it is fairly high risk for contracting or transmitting sexually transmitted infections if you aren't using any kind of protective barrier and one person has a sexually transmitted infection. So just know that that's a risk. Um, but again, using barriers can significantly reduce your risk. The last part of your question was about poop, which is a really common concern when people are exploring anal sex. I can't tell you that you're never ever going to encounter poop. If you're having anal penetration on a regular basis, then there is some chance that you might come across some poop at some point, but it's not a super high chance. So anal penetration happens in the rectum, and the rectum is not where your body stores poop. Your rectum is just kind of like a highway where poop moves through on the way out of your body. If you know that you're going to be doing some exploration and maybe getting into some anal penetration is before you and your partner start to play and fool around, you can go to the bathroom. And then that way, if there is sort of any poop on the horizon, you can get it out of your body and then you should be good to go. If you are someone who has like a regular pooping schedule, like you're like, I know I go once a day and then that'll be it. And you know, you've already pooped then you're probably okay. And then again, using barriers, gloves, condoms, finger cots, that can, you know, that gives you a barrier so that if there is some poop lingering around or you get some like surprise poop, it's not gonna get on anyone's skin. It's just gonna get on, you know, on the barrier and then it's relatively easy to just sort of clean it up. And then finally, you were worried about like, well, what if I poop myself? Or what if I, you know, I'm pooping all the time afterwards, which again, is a common concern. 
But as long as you're exploring safely, you're not pushing your body to the point of, you know, having pain that you don't want to be having, nothing's uncomfortable, then you should be okay. And in fact, there are a lot of people who have anal sex regularly who actually find they have better control over their bowels because they've basically been using those sphincters and like any other part of our body, if we, you know, use it and exercise it, it can become stronger. I'm going to leave some resources, the names of some books, some videos, some websites that you might want to have a look at if you want to learn more about anal sex. I'll leave that um, down in the comments under this video. If you have a question for me, you can either leave me a comment here on Facebook. You can contact me through my Twitter. I'm there at Nadine Thornhill. Or you can send me a message through my website at nadinethornhill.com slash contact. Well, I hope you enjoyed this very first question and answer session. I had fun answering it. Hope you have a great week and I will see you soon. Bye.